So, hello everyone, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, today we're going to talk about Windows Phone 8 application security. Hello everyone, my name is Dmitry Yudakimov. I'm security researcher in ERP Scan company. I'm specializing in SAP security and mobile security, iOS, Android, Windows Phone. And uh, I solve uh, tasks related to reverse engineering, fuzzing, exploit development, and other low-level stuff. Also, I uh, zero nice conference co organizer. And my name is Andrei Chisovskih. I'm a software developer, and I mainly focus on .NET platform. So let's have a um, brief overview of today's talk. Uh, first, we will shortly introduce Windows Phone 8. Uh, then we will discuss its uh, security model, the main concepts of its security model. After that, we will uh, talk a little bit about system internals, how you can learn the system, so how you can understand how the system works and application works. And after that, we will talk about applications, uh, what Windows Phone application is, how it looks like, and finally, we will talk about application security. So let's start. Uh, Windows Phone 8 uh, is a new <coughs> version of smartphone operating system from Microsoft. The previous version was version 7. Uh, Windows Phone 8 is based on the same core as Windows 8, and it has ARM architecture. Uh, well, the talk about application security only makes sense when you have some significant number of applications and users. So, how many of you have Windows Phone in your pockets? Well, uh, it's quite the same situation. Total market share of Windows Phone <coughs> is not so impressive, but it constantly grows. And I know that in some countries it's quite popular. For example, in Italy it has 14%. In Russia, for example, it has 8%. Well, analysts say that Windows Phone will have like 20% by 2015, but we personally doubt this estimate. We think that uh, numbers like 10% or 15% are more likely. Now it's struggling with BlackBerry for third place, and maybe someday it will struggle with iPhone for second place. Well, Android remain number one. Uh, of course, Windows Phone has its own uh, application store. Uh, there are all kinds of applications uh, from social networking to mobile banking. And it's important to mention that uh, Microsoft is targeting Windows Phone 8 not only to consumer market, but also to enterprise market. Uh, so they added some new features uh, to this version to support uh, enterprise needs. <coughs> So now let's see what Windows Phone 8 uh, offers us from the security point of view. Uh, Windows Phone 8 security model is based on several concepts. Uh, the first concept is chambers. Uh, chambers are some kind of boundaries which allows or disallows applications to do th certain th things. So we have two chambers, uh, the first one is called Trusted Computing Base, uh, all kernel level software run in this chamber, and the second chamber is called Least Privileged Chamber. So every non-kernel level software run in this chamber. Uh, the main difference between these two chambers is th that Trusted Computing Base has fixed permission set, actually it has full permission set, it can do anything on the device. And least permission, uh, least privileged chamber has dynamic permission set. Uh, this permission set is based on application capabilities. And when one is configured, uh, application can go outside of these boundaries. It can do or access anything uh, that is not allowed. So every application has its own chamber uh, based on capabilities. Capability is some kind of a marker which tells operating system that application uses some certain functionality. Uh, it's actually the same model as permissions in Android. Um, for example, if you have navigation app, it may use location and access to the internet. So application tells to operating system that I need location services capability and I need network access capability. 
Uh, and when user installs this application, uh, operating system reads these capabilities, configure a chamber for it, and later if uh, application will try to access, for example, media library, it will get an exception. Uh, there are actually three types of capabilities. Uh, the cap there are capabilities that uh, can be used by anyone, by any developer. Uh, there are capabilities that can be used uh, only, uh, that are accessible only for vendors. And there are a list of system capabilities. In Windows Phone 8, Microsoft added a lot of new capabilities. Uh, some of them were added to support some new features like NFC or SD card. Uh, and, but most of them were added in order to configure every software, in order to configure every ch chamber for every software. We see that, uh, oops, we see that uh, homebrew developers can use less than 30 capabilities, while system capabilities list contains more than 300 of them. Well, not of them might be actually used, but we can still feel the difference. For example, uh, if, if I'm, as an ordinary developer, will try to use uh, vendor or system <laughs> capability, I won't be even install and test application on the device. So capabilities are uh, declared uh, in special manifest file. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later. The next concept is sandboxing. It's about isolation between applications and between application and operating system. Uh, there are several basic points uh, we want to tell you. Uh, first, that a file system structure is hidden from applications and all input-output operations are limited to local folder. Each application has its own local folder and it cannot access local folders of other applications. And uh, Application communication is very limited as well. Uh, there are no rich IPC mechanisms like in Android. Uh, app to app communication is actually limited to two scenarios, file types associations and URI associations. So for ex every application can, uh, can register that it can handle certain file types or certain URI schemes and when another application will try to open a uh, file of this type or will try to launch a uh, link of this URI scheme, the first application will be launched. This communication is handled by operating system, so application don't know anything about each other. And what is more, when application handle files, it can access the original file. It can access the original file uh, only it can only copy to local folder. Uh, local folder is a kind of place where application store its data. It's the same as in iOS or Android. It's previously known as isolated storage, but in this version of operating system, Microsoft renamed it to local folder. So every application can store its data in three ways. It can use setting storage, uh, which keeps key value pairs. It can use file storage, which keeps files and directories. And also it can use database. Uh, Windows Phone 8 has embedded database, which is SQL Server Compact Edition. Um. Microsoft uh, also takes steps uh, to protect uh, application content uh, and to make application distribution and uh, more secure. Uh, first of all, all binaries uh, in Windows Phone 8 uh, have a digital signature. Uh, second, uh, application file uh, signed, they have uh, some kind of uh, checksum internals. Uh, if you change uh, uh, some content of application, you should also uh, change um, that checksum or just remove it, this checksum. Uh, third, Windows Phone 8 uh, uses uh, cert certificate pinning uh, when installing apps from the store. So uh, a cell man in the middle attack uh, uh, won't uh, work. Uh, 
And uh, finally, all ZAPS files from the store have a, a DRM K. Uh, in Win, uh, Digital Right Management System and Windows Phone uh, 8, based on uh, Microsoft Play Ready. On this slide, you can see a uh, uh, Microsoft Play Ready architecture. Uh, when developer submits uh, application, uh, package uh, server uh, uh, taking unprotected content and uh, package it uh, for distribution. After then, uh, protected content uh, copied to uh, distribution server and the license for it copied to uh, license server. Uh, before a client, uh, client uh, can uh, before a client can play back uh, content, uh, install application in our case. Uh, in our case, uh, it must acquire a license from license server. You can download uh, application from uh, uh, Windows Store on PC and then install this application uh, from SD card. Uh, but you can't uh, install the application without internet because you need connection to license server. And you can uh, install old version application because license server have only K for actual version. Uh, when Windows Phone 7 came out, all ZAPS file uh, were just ordinary zip archive uh, which you could open and view its content. Uh, now, for format is uh, different. Uh, ZAPS file contains a new file header, uh, play ready header object, and uh, encrypted uh, zip archive. Uh, play ready header object is uh, used by installer to locate and acquire a license. And uh, application content uh, encrypted with AAC algorithm. <coughs> Uh, we got these details by examining uh, operation system itself, and uh, now we uh, talk a little bit about how you learn a Windows Phone 8 internals. Um, as we said, Windows Phone 8 is based on Windows 8 core. Uh, to see how much they are similar, we need to compare some core files, uh, and uh, guys from Interpedius group make it. Uh, they extract, extracted files from the Windows Phone 8 emulator and uh, compare NTDLL and NTS kernel files uh, the, uh, with their desktop version. Uh, you can see uh, that they are almost similar, more than 99 person for both files. Uh, files from device should be compared with Windows RT as they have ARM architecture. Uh, but in general, uh, we show uh, us uh, uh, that basic layer of operation system is uh, common between uh, mobile and desktop uh, platforms. And of course, some bugs will be common too. Uh, Windows Phone Emulator is a uh, virtual machine and uh, it uses uh, uh, virtual uh, and uses Windows Phone 8 uh, Hyper-V image. This is a full image of operation system uh, compiled uh, as x86 architecture. You can mount this image uh, uh, and explore them. Emulator works in the same way uh, as device. Uh, the main difference, uh, import difference, uh, is that you can't install application from the store. Uh, in uh, Windows uh, Phone 8, Microsoft introduced a uh, standardized the download uh, bootloader requirements for OEM vendors. Uh, now all ROMs uh, one uh, one format called FFU and uh, when they are uh, not allowed to decision their custom uh, ROM formats. 
uh, you can mount, you can download some image for various devices from internet and uh, mount uh, uh, with image mount tool and uh, explore contents. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there is no public uh, full unlock uh, available these days for Windows Phone 8. Uh, now let's see how we can learn something from system binaries files. Uh, unfortunately, the bug symbols are um, not available, uh, but we can use um, event tracing windows to restore information. I wrote a simple uh, plugin for IDA Pro using IDA Python, uh, which uh, find a uh, web writer function and then make back trace for every register. Oops. Every register. Um, every register store a function of current name. Uh, name of current function. Um, if you want uh, this script, I can share it. Uh, this is a static analysis, but we can uh, a dynamic analysis. Uh, also, uh, by default, developer can use a limited subset uh, of Win32 uh, API functions, but we can use um, all the techniques for calling an arbitrary function in Windows Phone 8. Uh, we make uh, any allowed call from kernel -based .dll, uh, and then find a start address of uh, DLL by MZ signage and uh, parse import table for get, uh, get process addresses and load library functions. Um, and then we ca can call any function you want. Uh, this technique was used uh, in Windows RT. Uh, we check it for Windows Phone 8 and uh, it also works. Uh, for example, you can, uh, for example, you can uh, read contents from Windows uh, uh, system folder. So now let's move closer to applications. Uh, as we already mentioned, oops, as we already mentioned, uh, Windows Phone 8 is based on Windows 8 core, so it uses the same uh, set of core components as des desktop version. Um, .NET Framework version was also <laughs> updated, so now Windows Phone 8 uses uh, a big .NET version called Core CLR. It's actually the same version of CLR that Silverlight application run. Uh, in Windows Phone 7, developers could only use managed code to create applications, but, uh, but in Windows Phone 8, uh, Microsoft introduced uh, two big sets of APIs. Uh, the, first, the first one is called uh, Windows Phone RT. Uh, it's a subset of WinRT, a new COM-based API, uh, which is some kind of substitution <laughs> for Win32 API. And also developers can use DirectX. And what is important, uh, now developers can use native code to develop applications, uh, but support of this native code is still limited. For example, you can create pure C++ application. You still, to have, you still have to use, uh, C, for example, C Sharp and XAML for creating UI. But still, you can consume uh, a, these two APIs, and you can reference other native libraries. <coughs> There are several kinds of applications. There are first party applications. These are applications from Microsoft itself. There are second party applications, which are IAM applications. So when you buy a new device, you already have some pre-installed apps. The most common are third party apps. Uh, these are applications from, from the Windows Phone Store. And also you can develop and distribute applications without Windows Phone Store. For example, if you have a special type of account, it's called company account or enterprise account, you can develop your own application and you can enroll it on the employee's devices. Also, if you have developer account, uh, 
uh, you can develop application and uh, install it on your device in to be able to test it. Uh, but for this, you will need uh, developer. You will need to have developer unlock. It's important to mention that not all of these applications, well, uh, developer application and OEM application does not have DRM protection. So we can uh, we can explore them. Uh, we are able to open it, uh, to open them, and to explore them. <coughs> Now let's see what uh, Windows Phone application look like. Uh, so when you have Windows Phone application, uh, you have a zip file, which is actually zip archive, which can, which has uh, all the content inside. So there are different uh, file types. Uh, there are application assemblies in various formats, both managed and native. There are some resources like images or sounds, and there are also several manifest files. Uh, the most interesting is called BMW WM app manifest. Uh, it contains all application specific information like name, version, uh, operating system version it supports. It also declares list of capabilities, the list of registered file types, URI schemes, and so on. Now let's talk about application security. Uh, so developers of every operating system try to make their system secure and so that all applications will have some minimum level of security but it's just uh, the one part and the other part is how developers protect their applications and how they mitigate the risks. Uh, one of the main threats for application is data that it passed outside. So in Windows Phone 8, uh, Microsoft has added a lot of new features and some of these features deal with the data that is passed outside. So this is the place where developers should be careful. We can divide all vulnerabilities uh, into two groups. Uh, there are vulnerabilities that are connected to operating system. Uh, we can call them platform specific vulnerabilities, but also there are common vulnerabilities, common for all operating system and for all applications. So we can call them platform independent vulnerabilities. And this is interesting place for security researchers, for security auditors, and this is also the place uh, where developers uh, have to be careful. And now Dmitry will make a review of some common application issues and vulnerabilities in, in the context of Windows Phone and in comparison with iOS and Android. Uh, let's start from SD card. And Windows Phone 8 work with SD card is pretty strict. Uh, user can uh, store only media, documents, and application. Uh, application on device uh, can perform only read operation and can only, can only work uh, those file types it has registered. Uh, SD card content is uh, not uh, encrypted as in Android. Uh, big concern in mobile security is uh, user privacy. Uh, Windows Phone application can get um, device ID, uh, Windows Live Anonymous ID. Uh, this requires uh, special capabilities. And the need to uh, you need to get this uh, Identifiers in Windows Phone 8. Uh, sorry. Uh, in Windows Phone 8, this identifiers uh, uh, per publisher. Uh, this means that uh, uh, two applications from uh, different uh, publisher uh, will get uh, different identifiers. Uh, also, application get basic uh, device information, for example, device name, manufacturer, firmware, and version. Uh, other things uh, security auditors should pay uh, attention to uh, is location tracking. Uh, 
uh, in Windows Phone 8 application uh, also um, able to track uh, like to track location in background. Uh, maybe you know uh, about incident with AVG antivirus, uh, which was banned from the store uh, because. Uh, uh, he, uh, he was sending uh, personal information, uh, including including uh, local tracking about user. Uh, in Windows Phone 8 devices, internal storage uh, can be encrypted, uh, but com but it is limited to enterprise. Only if uh, you can uh, company account company may turn on encryption. Uh, plus, in some countries, this feature is not uh, uh, available due to low restriction, uh, for example, Russia or China. So if you are a regular user, your data may, may not be uh, protected. Uh, this requires application to encrypt uh, sensitive data uh, uh, that they uh, store or uh, transfer it to the network. Uh, for example, uh, both iOS and Android uh, uh, platforms have a key chain for storing encrypted data. Uh, but Windows Phone developer uh, should use a, a special, special API to encrypt uh, data before it will be stored. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, privacy is a big concern in mobile security. Application may uh, process or store uh, sensitive data and uh, this data uh, should not leak. Uh, we know such uh, more examples in other platforms, but uh, Windows Phone is uh, more secure in this question. Uh, for example, keyboard cache is isolated uh, per application. Uh, in other systems, the situation is uh, more worse. Uh, I also Android have a more uh, side channel for leak information. Uh, one of new feature in Windows Phone 8 is URI uh, association. Uh, this is a one attack vector. Uh, if got uh, uh, that process URI and uh, um, its parameter is incorrect, a legal action may be executed. Uh, also, it's not recommended to make any critical or security decision uh, based on URI parameters. All input uh, should be filtered. Uh, in iOS and Android, uh, we, see, we see the same situation. Uh, developer is fully responsible for handling URI. Uh, now let's talk about cross-site scripting in Windows Phone. Uh, Windows Phone application can use a web browser control for displaying and processing uh, web content. Uh, web browser control is based on uh, Internet Explorer 10. Uh, by default, uh, uh, script uh, execution is disabled. Uh, if you are an auditor, uh, first things uh, should you check is uh, whether JavaScript is enabled. If so, uh, check for input and uh, output data. Uh, directory traversal or path traversal is exploitation of uh, sufficient validation of user provided uh, uh, file names. If application somehow accept um, file path via user input or from the web server uh, and do not filter it, uh, we can read uh, some um, information uh, within local folder of application. Uh, there are several APIs that works with files. Uh, the old one from Windows Phone 7. Uh, the new one from Windows Phone 8 is uh, storage folder class, plus several Win32 uh, API function. Uh, this flow may seem obvious, uh, but still some uh, mobile application have it. Uh, this can be easily exploited uh, with man-in-the-middle attack. Uh, XML is another security point. Uh, as you know, XML can contain uh, two external entities uh, which may be resolving uh, during XML uh, processing. Uh, entities uh, that contain, contain data 
may to lead to, to information disclose or other system impact, for example, uh, Daniel of servers or uh, remote code execution. Uh, Windows Phone 8 has a separate namespace for XML processing. Uh, by default, uh, resolving uh, external entities is disabled. It's good. Uh, but developer may use a custom XML resolver and uh, write its own logic uh, for processing external entities. Um, this vulnerability is also simple to exploit with man in the middle attack, so pay attention to custom XML resolver. Uh, good old scale injection, it's never die. Uh, in Windows Phone 8, developer can use database, so scale injection is uh, actual. Uh, just like in iOS and Android, uh, Windows Phone allows uh, developer uh, to use parameterized queries. Uh, using parameters in uh, SQL commands uh, eliminates any threat uh, of SQL injection. Uh, this uh, also may seem uh, simple, but still SQL injection in, in, in OWASP uh, mobile top 10 list. Uh, this is my favorite topic, uh, memory corruption bug. In uh, Windows Phone 7, only OEM vendors, uh, developers, uh, could use native development. Now all developers are allowed to use C++. Uh, no secret that uh, low-level work with uh, memory is uh, dangerous and may lead to memory corruption issue, for example, buffer overflow, format string, or use after free. Uh, to develop Windows Phone 8 uh, application, developers have to use Visual Studio uh, 2012. Uh, by default, all uh, security-related uh, compilation flags uh, turned on. Uh, this is good, uh, but still developers have to write robust code uh, as some as uh, these flags make uh, exploitation more complex, but uh, don't make it impossible. Uh, to compare with other platforms, uh, we can say that uh, its area Windows Phone uh, is close to Android, uh, while in iOS exploitation of such memory is very hard due to code signing. So wrapping up, uh, we discussed, uh, we review, we have a no, had an overview of Windows Phone 8 security model, and we consider it pretty secure, at least for now. Uh, we saw that Windows Phone 8 has a lot of new features, uh, which may lead to new uh, kinds of attacks. And what we noticed during this research, research is that uh, API, secu all security-related API that are used by developers, is more flexible than in iOS. It gives you more space. It gives developer more, sp more, sp more space to configure th the things, uh, but yet it's enough, simple enough, uh, so developers shouldn't miss uh, something important, not like in Android. So we feel that this presentation uh, may be useful for people who is already familiar with Android or iOS and want to get some knowledge on Windows Phone, on, um, on making an assessment of Windows Phone applications. So thank you for your attention and we are ready for your questions. Questions, really? <coughs> Thank you for your attention. Let's grab some lunch. <laughs>